Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. This video marks the beginning of a new series that I'm doing. Uh, the title of the series is Introduction to the Logic of Argumentation. The series is not going to be very long compared to the other series that I do, maybe a few hours. But the idea isn't about the, the quantity or the length of the series, but hopefully the quality of this new lecture series. The idea is, is rather simple. In previous videos, I've introduced basic concepts in logic. I checked maybe a few days ago the my logic lecture series, and I surprised myself. I didn't think I had that much logic up on just like intro stuff, but there were six hours of me discussing discussing intro concepts to logic, which didn't include predicate logic and non-monotonic logic that I've done and modal logic that I've done on my on my channel. But what I I recognize is a lot of the the logic that has been presented has been presented in really its pure sort of mathematical form. And the idea for me is I'm not a professional logician, I'm not a mathematician. Um, I use logic as a means of analyzing argument, but as I'm going to dedicate in this entire series, it's a means of constructing argument. What's very, very important right from the beginning is, is to tell you, and this is the truth, for very, very complex I don't need to write it down anymore because I'm doing this for a while, it's in my head. But for very, very complex argumentation, when I sit down to write uh, one of my books, or if I sit down to write an article for submission to a, you know, a book that's being published, a book chapter, what have you, if the argument is very complex, I'll actually do the logic before I conceptualize the argument itself. Right? I formalize the logic, and then I go back and I use that formalized logic to guide me in writing literally the words. So for me, first comes the math, first comes the logic, and then comes the argument that I support to the logic. It just keeps my arguments sort of precise. It has a particular tone, however, so this is not going to be creative writing. Your, your writing isn't necessarily going to sound beautiful, but your writing will have a certain mechanical cadence to it. It will be very, very exact, the nature of this type of argument construction. Again, not a professional logician. This is an intuitive model that I've developed over the years, and you have to recognize when you approach this lecture series, you have to give the series itself and me a bit of flexibility because one, the ideas that are going to be discussed are extremely basic, but from this basis, you can take the series and, and build as you get better in logic. I will have established a solid enough foundation that you will then be able to take what I've given you now and apply it to much, much more complex things. So uh, it's sort of difficult to understand what that might mean without actually seeing a demonstration of what I mean by this. So uh, again, I'm going to I'm going to dedicate this entire lecture series to the construction of arguments based on an initial starting point of logic. We're going to start with the logic. We're not even going to know what we're going to argue about. And then we're going to use the logic as a template to construct argument. And then the arguments will get increasingly and increasingly and increasingly complex, always referring back to the same uh, standard. So let's begin. This is introduction to the logic of arguments. Introduction to the logic of arguments. Alright, All right, so please, there's a prerequisite video that you need to, a group of videos that you need to watch. As long as you know the five forms of logical um, construction, as long as you know the, the five rules of inference that I have listed below, then you don't necessarily need to watch this video. If you look at these five rules of inference that I have at the bottom, and you're not necessarily familiar with them, click the link where it says prerequisite videos. It's like maybe 10 minutes. Watch the video, it'll give you a refresher. It'll not, it's, for some people, a refresher, for some people, it'll give you a very simple introductory account of what we're doing here. Um, all right, so the next is section one. This is section one of the analysis. And the whole point of the video series is, uh, is based on uh, a prompt that I got on my Facebook from uh, Cynthia Feist and, 
and uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a, a lecture series on this, right? I'm going to demonstrate how to begin with um, a, a rule of inference. Later, you might begin with a complete deduction. You might begin with a completely sort of fleshed out um, reductio. All of that is much, much more complicated. I won't be doing that in a series, but I'll show you. Begin with the logic first, and then apply concepts and words to, to match the logic. Okay, so the disclaimer first. Uh, the system of argument formation formulation is of my own design and thereby not affiliated with any, any approved, quote unquote, systems of formal argument construction. It is an intuitive um, approach to logic. Again, this is a this is a, a this is the feeling, right? This is an intuitive approach, and the idea is there's going to be some flexibility. I'm not going to be rigorous in how I present this information because I want you to get a general understanding of how it's done and then feel comfortable enough for you to make um, accommodations and amendments where you need to make. The idea is uh, we can always talk about rigorous formulaic deduction, but in argument construction which is the point, meaning that you're writing an essay, you're writing an article, you're writing a book, what have you, having a, a very solid guide is really all that you need. There is flexibility where you can, you can amend the, the guide, and that is the intuitive, intuitive approach. So I'm going to teach you specifically how to do this, um, and it's, it's worked for me for years. Okay, so the lecture series will serve as a very introductory demonstration of how to incorporate the five rules of inference within your argument. I have the five rules which I'm about to go over now in your argument. I will offer for each of the five rules three increasingly complex demonstrations of incorporation. And basically all that means is for each of the five rules of inference listed below, I'm going to give you three examples. The example will remain the same. I will begin with um, an example that conforms to the rule of inference and then we will return to that example and complicate it and complicate it and complicate it. And then after three demonstrations, I think you'll get the idea. And you can make this as long as you want, right? It could be pages, it could be book, it could be book length, it could be volume length. And once you get the format, you should be able to move from there. So the five um, rules will be discussed are the first is modus ponens. And I'm not gonna write all this down because of you know it's there. So it doesn't make sense to write it down. Um, with the exception of modus ponens, I, I will write that one down because this first section is about modus ponens. So modus ponens, if A happens, then B, well actually no, let me do this, let me actually write it down. If A happens, so this is modus, right, modus ponens, it says if A happens, then B happens. And I've given this lecture, if you watched the video before, then you know the example that I gave. If A happens, then B happens. A happens, these three dots in a triangle means therefore, B happens. If I jump, I will fall. If I jump, I will fall. I jump, therefore, I fall. Right, I did that in the, in the previous video. We're going to complicate it substantially now. Right, so modus ponens, this is called a conditional, just so that you know. This arrow is called a conditional. Right. This is, the letter B is the consequence. The letter A is in the position of the antecedent. This is therefore. And this is our conclusion. So these are all the, the, the parts of the conditional, right? This is called the conditional, the arrow. To the left of the conditional is called the antecedent. To the right of the conditional is called a consequence, meaning that the consequence is a result of whatever is in the, whatever is on the left side of the arrow, the conditional. The triangle with three dots is therefore, and whatever comes to the right of therefore is your conclusion. So this is the basic format, right? And what we're going to do is, we're going, I'm just going to specifically look at modus ponens because I'm not going to do uh, in section um, 1.0 modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, or conjunction. I'll do that in subsequent video series, respectively 2, 3, 4, and 5. This lecture series will take me to section 5 and then we'll conclude the last one with a conjunction. But the idea, no, actually I'll do one after that because I